Good evening, everyone. This week's Parsha, of course, is Parashat Bimidbar. It is the uh, opening uh, Parsha of the Book of Numbers, we call it in English. The Medrash calls it Sefer HaPikudim. Uh, the, the Medrash calls the Book of Bimidbar the Book of Counting, Numbers, of Census. And so it's interesting that our, the, the term that, that uh, we use in the general um, world, which we call the Sefer HaPikudim, the Book of Numbers, um, that, that book is the way it's referred to in, um, that's the way it's referred to in uh, the Midra Midrash. Just want to make sure I can let everybody in, admit all. Please forgive me for talking out loud. <laughs> uh, all right, very good. Um, so we have Sefer Apikudim, the book of numbers. And uh, it would appear from, from the standpoint of purely calling it the book of numbers, that the book itself may not be that thrilling or dynamic. But of course, we know the Sefer, Sefer the Bimidbar has within it some very, very essential elements of uh, our sojourn in the desert. And uh, as well as of our, um, our becoming a nation, actually in parts of Bimidbar, that's exactly where the tone is set for what it means to be a Navi, what it means to be a prophet. Can more than one person be a prophet, um, et cetera. And so all of these elements uh, will be dealt with at one point or another in Sefer Hapakudim, the book of numbers. Um, now, I'd like to begin by saying that th this, uh, we're going to do the Haftarah this evening, uh, but it's going to be the Haftarah which is selected in light of uh, the, the content of Sefer Bereshit. And we're going to talk today about vastness uh, and intimacy, and we're going to talk about greatness and smallness. Um, both those elements are found both in this parsha as well as in the uh, uh, as well as in the uh, the haftorah itself, and so there's uh, I'm sure that among the the selections that Chazal made was this this concept of seeing the recurring theme of uh, of uh, of greatness and smallness and vastness and intimacy all in one. It's interesting that when, we, when we're in a, a, a huge crowd, for example, those who attend, uh, let's say, a, a large concert, oftentimes outside, or those people go to a, to a baseball game or a football game where there could be tens of thousands, 20, 30, 40,000 people, there are two emotions that seem to go through us both at the same time. One, you feel rather small that your... Uh, your participation or your presence in itself uh, is not something which makes much of a, a difference. On the other hand, there is something exhilarating about being part of something large, something great. So let's go from the trivial to, to the sublime. The trivial is I'm at a baseball game and uh, somebody hits a home run and 40,000 people scream and the home team wins and uh, you do, do feel a part of something big, no question about it. Um, but that's in a trivial sense. But the sublime sense is that once every seven and a half years, we get to participate in a worldwide seum of tens of thousands, and even hundreds of thousands of people. And there you feel at the, uh, you feel on one hand, you feel very small. Think about what I could have done and didn't, what I might have accomplished and failed. On the other hand, I know that I am part of an unending chain of tradition, that I'm part of, of a chain of people who learn the Torah Kadosha, which Hashem has given to us, and, and that even if I have myself not finished Shas, I am a part of that people. And even if, I'm, even if I haven't done much at all in terms of learning, I am a part of that celebration. I rejoice. So large crowds can make us feel very small or very great. Ideally, um, both, quite frankly, I think 
ideally both emotions should should take place. On the one hand, um, I need to realize that you know I am a, a person, and of course every person is important. But I have to look at what have I accomplished over this period of time. Look at what the, what other people have accomplished. And again, I should never look at see uh, as as Rebzusha said, the the great Hasidic Rebbe once said. He said, God is not going to ask me why I wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu, because I can respond, I wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu, because you didn't give me Moshe Rabbeinu's intellect. You didn't give me um, his, his personality that would allow him to lead the people as he did. But God is going to ask me, why weren't you Zusha? And of course, uh, when, when we are in a large crowd like that and we see the great accomplishments, we sometimes can, can feel, well, why wasn't I what God has given me to be? To be, On the other hand, I am part of something very great and very big. And I have not only the right, I have the obligation to acknowledge that, uh, that presence that I have with, uh, with the, the people of Israel. Well, having said that, let's now um, look at uh, the, uh, uh, the, this, this week's Parsha. Um, we begin with, of course, the Torah begins with a census, uh, and that's why one of the that's one of the reasons, or perhaps the main reason, why uh, the midbar is called numbers because it begins with the uh, the the, uh, the numbers of people being uh, counted in in our parsha, and so we find here um, the uh, the very beginning. The Torah commands Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, what you, you need to do is you need to, to, to count all of the various different people, count them by tribes and see how, they, um, uh, how many people there are. We're not going to go into why uh, the, the, the census is made at this time, because I'll talk about it, but we are just going to leave it that this is the first of two uh, censuses that are and countings that are given to the Jewish people in the book of Bamidbar. But we're also now going to turn to the very end of this parsha. The very end of the parsha is uh, remarkable in that uh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu tells us that we have an obligation. Now that the, we have counted the people, now that we we have, of course, the uh, all of the uh, the the avoda of the service of the, of the Mishkan, the Korbanot, and, and the lighting of the menorah, and, the, and, all of the, uh, and all of the furnishings of the Mishkan are in place, the menorah, the shulchan, uh, the, the Mizbach HaSahav, and the Mizbach HaNech, well, outside the Mizbach HaNechoshet, all of those are there. And of course, we have the Oron Kodesh. The Torah gives an admonition to Moshe Rabbeinu and to the Kohen. Their job is to cover each and every one of these holy objects, and not, not necessarily our own, because that's in a different chamber. But the Torah says, Al et shevet mishpachot hakati. Do not be the cause of the, of the destruction of the, the tribe, which has the, um, the, the, the families of Kahat, because they are to carry the, uh, the they are to carry the, various different furnishings uh, it, it, around as the Jews would, would go from, excuse me, from place to place. The Zot Asulahem, this is what you do, what you're to do. The Chayu, the Loyamut, so that they live and are not, and do not die due to neg negligently looking at these very, or staring at these various articles of the Mishkan. The Gishtam El Akod, El Kodesh HaKadoshim, when they come to the, to the inner sanctum, Aaron of Anav Yavo, Aaron and his children shall come, the Samu Otam, Ish Ish Alavodatova Al Maso, each will be given his particular uh, uh, um, tasks that he's supposed to do, and the families are to do so. Although Yavo Lero, they should not come to stare or to see, Kivala et Kodesh um, They should not be, um, they should not come to, to stare uh, at the the, the various articles in the Mishkan because they were too sacred for us. And so therefore we have the obligation, uh, says the Torah, 
to take care to protect this family of Levi. So notice what, what has happened in the structure of the Parsha. It begins with the counting of thousands of people, 600,000 men above the age of, uh, of, uh, of, of 20. Uh, and and uh, that, then there's the women and there are the children. We're talking nearly 3 million people. And then it moves its way down to one family. So this brings us back to the idea that being a part of something very big and very great can allow us to feel very good about ourselves. But we dare not, we dare not uh, forget the individual. Judaism has always been concerned about the individuals, individual rights, individual privileges, individual uh, sanctity. And so the Torah says, all these people are here, but no, uh, K-N-O-W, no, that um, you have to take care of them. And you can't, you call on him, may not be the inadvertent cause of, uh, of death or pain to other people of one family. That's basically the structure of Parshat, uh, uh, Parshat Bimidbar. Now let's look at the Haftorah of Parshat Bimidbar. And we can see that it is actually taken, it's one of the most famous uh, passages in all of Tanakh. Um, the, the Torah tells us, uh, I'm sorry, the Haftorah begins, V'haya mispar b'nei Yisrael k'chol hayam. That Hashem assures Hosea, one of the 12, they're minor prophets, no prophet is minor, but minor refers to the length of their prophecy that we have, um, not, uh, not their character or their importance. But Hosea, Hashem tells Hosea, you should know Hosea. The mispar, the number, again, we're talking about numbers, of the Jews, it's going to be like the sands of the sea. Immense, huge. It cannot be count, measured, nor can it be counted. And when the time will come, when, when the Jews do tshuva, that it will be said, in, instead of saying, Lo amiatem, you are not my nation, uh, ye omer lohem, it will be said about them, b'nei el chai. They are, in fact, the children of the living, eternal God. So that's how the Parsha begins. They are going to be k'chol hayam. Now, chol uh, has in its, uh, um, you know, it, it, is, it is something which literally cannot be counted at all. Um, but it, 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 it can also be put into clusters. People make sand castles and they make various other things. That's the nature of sand, that it, on the one hand, it can cluster together. And of course, the Jews are also not here, but the Jews are, uh, uh, are likened to stars. Stars, by definition, are bright and separate. They cannot in any way clash. If they do, there is a cataclysmic um, explosion which takes place that we may not see for many years, because even at the, even at the speed of light, 800 and, I mean, 186,000 miles per second, it can take years, uh, we're four and a half years from the light years from the closest star, going at 186,000 miles per second, per second. Now, at the end of, but at the end of the half star, 20 or 21 psukim later, we come to a completely different concept. And that is that after Hashem talks about uh, hopefully the, the, uh, the bringing about of a peaceful existence between humans and animals, then ultimately that will lead, as Rav Hirsch says, to the, it's, it, it'll be a symbol of the, of the renewal of, of, of the bringing of peace between humans and humans. And then the Torah tells us about, um, uh, Hosea tells us about the intimacy of the Jewish people. Hashem says, when that time comes, <clears throat> when we begin to fulfill our, not only our obligations, but our full potential, Hashem says, I uh, will betroth you forever. 
And I will, uh, and I will uh, be, be betroth you in tzedek and mishpat. Now, it's, there's a, two views about what these concepts are. A tzedek um, is, the Malbim tells us, that tzedek is the idea of, of wanting uh, uh, and, and actually working at a just society, one in which people get what they deserve. And mishpat is uh, the, uh, the actualization of it through laws. Uvechesed, and those, by the way, tzedek and mishpat, that's what the Jews will bring to the table. That we as a nation, as individuals and as a nation, will be a nation of tzedek, a nation of righteousness and mishpat. And, and uh, uh, righteousness means lifnim mishurat adin, means to say that we, um, that we do not limit ourselves to the, 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 the basics of the law, but we go beyond it. And mishpat is the basics of the law, a nation that is a law-abiding nation, v'chesed uvarachamim. And, and, and God will bring to the table chesed, kindness, and rachamim, uh, which is mercy. Now, um, because we didn't earn any of it. So the chassan brings some things, and the kala brings some things. And then the Torah tell, and then Hosea says, they rastich li be'amuna. And I will betroth you to me, the Jewish people, the Amuna. Now, it means through the Amuna that you have had throughout the Galut, the Amuna that you have had throughout uh, Jewish history, despite all the travail and the difficulty, as I spoke about on, on, uh, before Yom Yerushalayim, when uh, in Yerushalayim, remember we say, Bonei Yerushalayim Hashem, Hashem builds Jerusalem, that that it is a process, it's not only an event. Uh, uh, that God is going to, will gather the dispersed people of Israel. And then, what does Hashem say? Um, Hashem says, uh, or through David, Hashem says that, um, that, the, that, that God, at that time, when Yerushalayim is reunited, will heal the brokenhearted. So some of the say heal the brokenhearted means that, in fact, their Jews have had our hearts broken in every generation, not only yearning for the gula, children that were killed, and parents that were killed, and, and pogroms, and then ultimately a shoah. God will heal the, the, the brokenhearted. Uh, and others say, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, of course it includes that, but it also means that getting Yerushalayim came at a cost. We lost uh, 700 precious Jewish soldiers, the same age that, that I am then. I was 19, they were 19, and they themselves did not have all the joy that, that we have gone through. And so that there's brokenheartedness there. The, the, the redemption of Yerushalayim and the liberation of Yerushalayim from Jordanian occupation came at a terrible price. But God ultimately, God ultimately will heal the brokenhearted. And then in the end here, uh, Hosea says, I will betroth you through your emuna, through all the travail and all the trouble and all the difficulties and all the tears and all the pain, I will, uh, I will betroth you. And then the Adat at Hashem. And there is a difference between belief and knowledge. Belief is something that I can't prove. Can't prove it. Ani ma'amin, as a matter of fact, somebody once said that the term ma'amin, I believe, means sometimes I have to force myself to believe. Sometimes it's not so easy to believe when difficult times come. And so it is the amuna, both the amuna pshuta. Of, of the Jewish people, that, that means to say that they question nothing. I I know that there is a God as far as I am concerned, and that God loves Klal Yisrael, and I have perfect faith that the Mashiach will come. But the, but Hashem says, even Emunah itself has its limitations. But the time will come, the Adat at Hashem, at this marriage between the Jewish people and Hakadosh Baruch Hu, if we come with tzedek and mishpat, 
if we come with righteousness and with, and with justice, and Hashem comes with chesed and rachamim, meaning to say uh, he, he does things for us, even though we didn't necessarily earn it, then he says the amuna itself will be transformed into, into yidi'ah, into knowing God. That, that in itself is different. Now, let's talk a little bit about these concepts of, uh, of uh, marriage. First, we'll turn to Rabbi Yashin Ber Salavechi, who talks about the marriage, and he does talk about it here at the end of this Haftorah. Again, uh, for people who are really interested, this is a, uh, a five-volume set uh, of the writings and, and the speeches of Rabbi Yashin Ber Salavechi, and they are verbatim. They're taken from tapes and various other things so that we do have them, even though he himself did not write uh, a parish on Chumash. But he writes as follows. Marriage is more than a formal community or useful partnership. Oh boy, that's what we begin to think uh, in, our, in our 21st century uh, illusion, okay? That marriage, family, these things are a, uh, are a, uh, a, a useful partnership that can be dissolved at any time. But Rabbi Yashiber tells us even back then, not true. It is rather a covenantal community which is nurtured by the awareness of absolute belonging to each other. Absolute belonging to each other. Married life is an existence in fellowship, togetherness. In it, man finds completeness and a complete framework of marriage. And in a complete framework of marriage, love becomes not an instinctual reaction to the heart, or to the shocking sudden encounter with beauty, but rather it is, but it is a, an eternal uh, challenge for two people to share their destiny together. So in this case, it's not two people, it's Klau Yisrael and a Kodesh Baruch. So this is what Rabbi Yosha Bear mentions about Tzedek, Mishpat, Chesed, and Racham. Now, we've heard, um, Sorry, the Malbim says to us, when he defines terms, the Malbim loved to define terms. Uh, and he did it in, in a parallel parish that he has. One is uh, to each, each Sefer and Tanakh. Um, but he also has a, he also has a, um, a companion parish called Beira Milot. Those sometimes give a, give a, gives us real insight into common words and not so common words in Tanakh. Now here in his commentary at the end of the second parak of Oshea, from which our Haftorah is taken, right? Uh, he defines tzedek and mishpat. Bein adam lechaver. According to the Malbim, the idea is people come to a marriage group, what they have. What do human beings have? They have bein adam lechaver. The concepts of, of law and abiding by the law. And then he says, and they come with emuna is between man and God. Mishpat lefiadin says mishpat is when we function within the law. But tzedek lifnim mishurat adin. Says the Malbim, tzedek is something beyond what we call the letter of the law. I'd like to point out that Chazal use a much different phrase than we use when we want to say somebody has gone beyond the letter of the law. It means to say the law requires them to give X and we give X plus, whether it's, whether it's an action, it's X plus, or whether it's money, an X plus. And that's what we call the Tzmi Mishura Tadin in, uh, in, in a, a, our general law, beyond the letter of the law. But I'd like to suggest that Shura Tadin means Lifnim means within, not beyond. In English, you say beyond the letter of the law. But, but the, the Hebrew phrase is lifnim, within the letter of the law, meaning to say when a person acts, we should not just act in a, in a perfunctory uh, 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 behavior that says, okay, I've, here's the law. I'm within the law. I'm, I've done the guidelines of the law. But rather, lifnim mishurat adin means you look at the inner law. What is the purpose of the inner law? 
What is it? Yes, you might be able to get by by, let's say, if you have a dispute with someone and uh, you've given and it's judged that you have to give three thousand dollars or whatever it may be, but that other person you know is suffering. And so even the law may only require you a certain amount, you say to yourself, but what does the law want of me? Not just I'm going that I give more, but what does the law want of me? What is the inner meaning of the law? And that allows the true tzaddikim to be able to go and to, to, to always consider what the law is intended, not just how the law comes out. So Chesed and Rachamim says, uh, says the, the Malbim that those things are brought by God to our wedding. The Adat, uh, this idea, as he says, is more than just a, uh, and this is the Malbim, he says, Yidia, the knowledge is more than just, shall we say, a, uh, um, uh, a general knowledge of uh, more than emuna. It is deeper than emuna. The knowledge is something that is not just belief, but it is actual um, reality for someone that cannot be disputed. That's the difference usually between a belief or of a, uh, a belief or a um, an opinion. An opinion is something can, that can be disputed. Uh, obviously, the more buttressed the opinion is with, with either facts or, or support, then of course, then it, then it, it has more, uh, more vitality to it, more believable. But knowledge is something, reality is not something that can be contested. The earth is round. You can't say, but it's my opinion that it's not. Well, okay. I mean, there's always going to be somebody whose opinion is that. But it, it's something which cannot be uh, disputed. And so therefore he says, this emuna, says the Malbim, will turn into yidia. It will become not just I believe, but I know. Now, Rav Hirsch, in the late 19th century, writes as follows. He says that, that tzedek is, is not something that we do, but it's a recognition of the ideals of right and justice. We all have a concept of what is right and what is just. And so reverse says that's said it. Not in it doesn't get to a court of law. I know intuitively certain things just are not right. And 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 that, that applies to the Jewish world, the non-Jewish world. I know certain things aren't right. And so the, but Mishpati says are the laws by which those ideals are to be brought into practical realization. So tzedek is my concept of what is right and what is proper. The laws are what actually, that actualize that, uh, that belief uh, or that understanding into a daily life. And Chesed and Rachamim says, Rufush, is the, and this is very interesting, it doesn't necessarily connect it to Hashem, although all of it's connected to Hashem, but it's not exclusively Hashem's purview. He says, it's the ability for the highest unselfishness for that brotherly love that finds its own greatest happiness and the happiness it brings to others. That's chesed and racham. It's not something that I owe you. Uh, people who are in love don't keep score. And if they do, they stop being in love for a while. But, but it is the idea that my destiny is tied to the person with whom I share my destiny. And, and if that person is ill or that person is is uh, experiencing pain and difficulty, then I experience pain and difficulty. They say of one of the great Gedolim, and I'm not so sure that I remember which one, he once went to the doctor and the doctor said, with his wife, and, and, and the doctor said, so the doctor said, what seems to be the problem? And, and, and this Rav said, our foot hurts, our foot. So that it is the actualization of what, what Rav Hirsch says, and that, and Rav Hirsch does not limit it to Jews, I must point out. He says, it looks, one needs to look at all fellow creatures as children of one father, which makes the true Jew at all times put himself in the place of his suffering fellow man and incites him with sympathy to render immediately every possible assistance. Boy, can we use this um, in, in our own lives today? Um, when we see such suffering, 
Again, you could argue from morning until night, the Ukrainians, what they did in World War II, those people didn't do a thing. They're all dead. We have to realize that there are people who are suffering. Yes, some of them may be bad. Any of them may be very good. The people in Uvalde are suffering in an immeasurable way. And we need to also look because these children were their lives, literally. And so when you see the pain on their faces, uh, we as Jews need to feel that pain. We need to feel it. That's chesed and rachami, according to reverse. That's what chesed and rachami is. Now, finally, this concept of from vastness to intimacy, uh, the vastness of, of a, uh, uh, of, of a singamashas worldwide, or the vastness of a huge parade, Lahavdil, I must say Lahavdil, of course. We're, we're part of that. And the intimacy, which, which both elements are necessary for us to be able to feel the joy of intimacy, the joy of sharing, of sharing our lives with, with a person or people so that, they, so that uh, together we share our destiny. That concept from vast to intimate is brought each and every single day in our, in our davening, each and every single day in our davening. First, you know, of course, davening consists of bracha to the beginning, praising our Kodesh Baruch Hu. Then we have a section of davening in Shachari, which we call Suke de Zimra, and that there uh, are very clear rules concerning what we can say, what we can interrupt during Suke de Zimra, because it's intended to be pure praise. But then, after, uh, let's say, when we are in Shul, uh, whether it's Shabbat or during the week, after, um, after Baruchu, Kaddish and Baruchu, then we embark upon what we call Birchat Kriya Shema. Kriya Shema begins, Birchat Hashem, Elohim, Echolam, Yotzer, or, blessed are you God who creates light, again, from the very beginning of the universe. Almost everyone agrees, even the people who are, uh, you know, the, the people who, who, who are physicists who want to talk at the beginning of the world, they say, in the beginning, there was only energy. In the beginning, there was only energy. That's not very far from, from our understanding. In, in many ways, it can, it can be associated with what we say. There was light, Yotzer Or, Uvori Choshech, darkness and vast darkness, Ose Shalom, Uvore Atakol. That's what we talk about. Then what do we do? We, we, we embark upon a, um, uh, a, a segment that says uh, that in which we see that uh, uh, that uh, we that there is the, the world which uh, the world of the angels, so to speak, the world which is so vast, so different from ours, and then the, the angels say, "Baruch Hashem, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh Hashem, Holy, Holy, Holy is God," and then and then the angels continue to speak, and then the next part of it is uh, we we move now to the, the bracha of the Kel Baruch, the Imoti Tenu, that all of these celestial beings praise God, but then slowly it comes down uh, that God is the Baal Melchamot, Yodea uh, Tzedakot, Hashem does all of the, uh, 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 bring, brings onto earth all of these various elements into earth. And then we say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Yotzer Hamorot. We bless Hashem as the creator of all of the heavenly and celestial bodies that would include earth. So now we move from this uh, angelic world to the world that we are much more familiar with, the material world. And then, but we're not done. We say, Baruch Hashem, Yotzer HaMorot. And in this, every single day, we say this, including Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, everything. We then start, we say, Ahava uh, Rabba Avtan. We move from, the, from God, the creator of the world, the universe to our part of the universe to our part of this universe, which is Avorabhavtan Hashem. You have loved the entire Jewish people, right? And we and 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 that that love is expressed through the Torah that He's given us. Uh, we know that that if a person didn't didn't uh, say Birchat the Torah that morning, they can actually use this bracha uh, to thank Hashem for the Torah that that we have, and then. It says, and you have brought us uh, 
to 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 your great name, all right? Salabe amet laudot l'cha to thank you, uh, and then to say what do we say? Baruch atah Hashem, blessed are you, Hashem. Habocher ba'amo Yisrael ba'ava. You God has blessed the nation of Israel with love. And notice we move now from from the angels, a completely different world, to our universe, to our part of the universe, to our part of of mankind, which is the Jewish people. And then all of that journey, all of that journey concludes with one after Shmaitra Hashem Alakin Hashem Akad, includes in the singular, the Ahavta et Hashem Alakin. You, the individual, each of us must love God. So each and every day we travel that journey from the furthest reaches of Hashem's creation all the way down to the show in which we're in or the home in which we find ourselves. And, and then it is just me and God. The intimacy of being with Hashem it goes from the vastness to intimacy, very much like our Parsha we have today. So um, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for uh, sharing in this uh, shir. And Yer Tashem, we'll pick it up next week. And I want to wish everybody Shabbat Shalom. And of course, uh, today is the uh, 46th day of the Omer. Oh, yeah, it's already the 47th. And also, um, um, we also want to make sure that, uh, uh, that Shavuot, that Yer Tashem, will be a, a joyful and meaningful Shavuot. I wish that for everyone. And Yer Tashem, we'll see each other next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome, everyone.